Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Buerta. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You can see by the color of our vestments that Lent is progressing. We're almost at the end. We reflect back on our Lenten journey so far. What are the graces been that we'd like to thank God for? But also... What are the shadows that we might have discovered in our lives as we've done our work of reflection? We ask the Lord for healing now and for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to bind up our wounds, to forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to teach us how to love and how to serve. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the peoples of the world, all the nations, with the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your word, you reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, the Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or in the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but behold, he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. He revives my soul. The Lord Lord is is my shepherd. shepherd. There There is is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. The Lord Lord is is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for the length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true and try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is a shame even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it is said, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. He who follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from his birth. And he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. And others know, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. And it was a Sabbath day, and Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, He put clay in my eyes, and I washed And I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, or he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered him, You were born in utter sin and would teach us? 
and they cast him out. Jesus heard that they'd cast him out. And having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I might believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Being born blind today would be a tragedy. In the time of Jesus, it was much, much worse. Because in the first century, blindness was connected to sin. If we were blind, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't a mistake. It was God's justice. It was God's punishment for sin. But whose sin was it? the parents, or the child's? That's the question that the disciples put to Jesus. And I love the answer that Jesus gives. It was neither, he says. Blindness and sin are not necessarily related. And he goes on to heal him so that he could give God glory. All of those who knew him were astonished, but the Pharisees were not impressed. Rather, they wanted to know how it happened. When the blind man first explained the healing, they would not believe him. And then when the Pharisees realized that the healing was done on the Sabbath, they became even more upset. They did not care about the man. The miracle of sight, or the fact that this man could now live a normal life. They forgot a deep and fundamental truth, that God made the Sabbath day for human beings, and not us for the Sabbath. The Pharisees forgot that every moment of every day is the right time, the right moment to bring life and healing to people. They end the conversation with the man born blind by saying, you were born entirely in sin, and you're trying to teach us? Get out of here. They sent him away. But thankfully, the story does not end there. There is one more conversation left in the story, and from it, we learn the real purpose of healing this man born blind. You see, Jesus explains to the man born blind that his purpose in this world is to give sight to the blind and to give blindness to the sighted. It's a very strange thing to say, that Jesus would make some people blind. But it's only strange if we take his words entirely literally. What Jesus, in fact, is saying is this. To some I will give sight, and to others I will take away insight. The Pharisees thought they knew what the truth was. They were absolutely convinced that blindness was evidence of a sinful life. So too was the leper, the deaf mute, the paralyzed man, the barren woman, the epileptic child. Their sickness was proof of their immorality. It was a black and white world for the Jewish people. Their judgments were rigid and immediate. If you didn't live like them, and look like them, and worship like them, and believe like them, you were wrong. They were right, and you were rejected. While the Pharisees 
only saw things in stark terms of black and white, the world around them was actually colored in many shades of gray. They became blind to the needs of people, and they only saw broken laws and unmet religious rules and sin. There are times in our own 21st century that the church looks and sounds an awful lot like first century Judaism. We become the Pharisees when we make judgments about people without knowing the circumstances of their lives, when we insist on black and white answers to complicated problems and the very gray issues of our day. We are the Pharisees when rules are more important than people and when human performance carries more weight than grace and love. And when we become blind to the hurting and the poor and the rejected of our day, then the words of Jesus echo down to the corridors of time. I came into the world so that those who do not see may see, and that those who do see may become blind. Now, I'm not saying that as Christians, we should not have convictions. Convictions are an integral part of who we are as God's people. But when we impose our convictions on others, when we insist that our way is the right way, the only way, and that those who disagree with us are completely wrong, then we have become blind. Literally, the Hebrew word Pharisee means people who have separated themselves. So are you a Pharisee? Have you separated yourself from the church, the body of Christ, because you are so utterly convinced of your own rightness? This happens to us Christians when we build walls to isolate ourselves from those who are different, whether it's the deaf, the blind, the Muslim, those in prison, the homosexual, the abortionist, the divorced, and the list goes on and on. Like the Pharisee, we claim that we are right because the laws of Moses and the words of the prophets are on our side. But when I read about the life and the love of Jesus, well, it makes me wonder. When Jesus died on the cross for us, he tore down the walls of separation and judgment. He modeled for us how love can be more powerful than judgment. So why then would we want to rebuild those walls? Why would we want to separate ourselves from the very people that Jesus loves? It's a question that Jesus must be asking each time we proclaim that we are the ones who are absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, right. We are blind no more. We have seen the light of grace, and we cannot climb back into our darkness, into our own blindness. We now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now ask our God to illumine us and all of the world with the light of Christ and answer to these our prayers. That all the members of the church and those who are preparing to become members at Easter will find renewed strength in God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people will find lasting peace in God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the blind and the ill, the infirm and the dying, will find abundant comfort in God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who worship here will find welcome refreshment in God's goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died will find everlasting happiness in God's house. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis for those who have suffered harm from members of the church. May they find within the church herself a concrete response to their pain and suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, unfailing light and Father of lights, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have cast out the darkness of hatred and deceit, and you have poured out on the human family the brightness of truth and love. Answer the prayers we've made to you. Help us to live as children of light this day and every day, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Rather mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ and will himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, God, be pleased with peace we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands. The praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, 
He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of rebirth to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, with Butit Lachale, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the For kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we! who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Almighty God, you enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads now as we pray for God's blessing.
Lord God, look upon those who call to you and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.